Good morning, viewers. God bless you. You are highly favored in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for getting connected to this wonderful Wednesday online service. I say to you, peace of God be with you. Grace of God will be with you. God's favor be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I don't want to waste too much of your time. I just want to continue from where I left last time. Remember, we were discussing about the issue of altars. But today, I just want to share with you something that is along those lines, but not part of the series that we were talking about and you were learning from these past two, three weeks. So I hope you are ready to get connected. I hope you are ready to receive what God has in store for you today in this wonderful Wednesday service. May God richly bless you. And like I always say, make sure that you share the broadcast you invite someone. There are many people who are out there waiting to be delivered, waiting to be healed, waiting to hear a wonderful message that will transform their lives. And they can only hear that or they can only learn once they see this broadcast shared on your timeline. So may God bless you as you are sharing. May God bless you as you are inviting your friends. And please kindly tell us where you are watching us from. And I'll be praying for you as I'm watching you right now online. May God favor you. May God increase you. You are a blessing. I'm sure as you are watching right now, you have already pressed that button that says you must get notifications each time there is a live video so that you don't get uh, caught up and miss what God wants you to learn time and again each time that I am online. So may God favor you for that. May God bless you. And another thing, I'm sure you have seen the supporter button and the stars button. May God lead you, God touch you in your heart to support this broadcast. For, because for us to come and broadcast to you right now, we need your support. May God favor you as you do that. So last time we were talking about altars and on Sunday we had a very powerful prayer session you can find it uh, on youtube so that you can also pray with us you know the prayers that we do here are not time bound even if you go today after this message and you pray together with us the same power the same anointing the same grace that was there on sunday will still be visible in those prayers to deliver you and to set your family free May God richly bless you. Today, I want us to ju jump into the Word of God. But before we jump into the message that I have for you, remember when I gave you the 2021 prophecies in the church? I'm sure, no, it was not in the church. It was um, online, I remember, because during um, due to COVID-19 regulations and lockdown, we could not manage to have a crossover service. I mentioned something I said this year as I received the message in the prayer room we must be able to use our hands remember it's a year of divine purpose we must use our hands so today I want to start a new message that is going to usher us into a new a message of how we are going to discover our divine purposes so during the course of the, the month and the year, we shall uh, unleash a very powerful session on how to discover your divine purpose. But today I just want us to quickly look at the scriptures. If you will turn with me to the book of 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. <coughs> Excuse me. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. 
but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elijah replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elijah then said, go around and ask all your neighbors of empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. May God bless the reading of his word. May this word that we are going to share in this broadcast tonight bless every viewer, bless every person that is connected in the name of Jesus. May this message come as a transformation to your life, to your soul, to your body, to your spirit, and every aspect of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Like I always say, I need you to get your notebook because there are times where you need to go back and revisit the scriptures, revisit the notes to encourage yourself to revive your spirit or just for revision's sake so that you may um, show thyself approved after you have studied the word of God. So please kindly take your notebook. What I want to teach you is something that you need to hear in this year 2021 and beyond. And what I'm going to teach you tonight is what you will need for generations to come. So based on the scripture that we read, I'm just going to be fast. So please bear with me. From where we read in the book of um, 2 Kings chapter 4, I want us to study from verse number 1 until we get to verse number 7. The Bible is saying, The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elijah the prophet and said, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets, when she fell into a problem, her first bus stop was to inquire from the man of God, was to hear God's mind concerning a situation. When she fell into debt and realized that she was going to be under serious problem, she did not rush to the debt cancellation or debt uh, review company. The first step that she took was to go and inquire from the servant of God what God was saying concerning a situation. I'm talking to some people here who are in some situations like this woman who are facing some difficult situations in their lives. It might be health situations, work-related situations, marital situations, financial situations. I pray for you tonight that after this message, you might be having the same grace and the same anointing or the same revelation of this woman, this widow, who knew that the first thing that she had to do is to hear what God is saying concerning a situation. Sometimes we are quick to act or we are quick to make decisions. We are quick to sign documents. We are quick to sign many contracts. We are quick to pay some money to do some certain kinds of businesses or to purchase some certain kinds of properties without first hearing the mind of God. 
we are in a generation or we are a generation that tend to come or, or run only to God when our own mindsets, our own plans, our own visions have failed us. So this woman, the first stop, she knew that her man or her husband was among the company of the prophets. Like today, she knew that her husband was a believer. Her husband, she, she even mentioned in verse 1 that the husband revered the Lord. So she knew that the situation that she was in was not meant to be, I mean, she was not meant to be in that situation simply because she believed that her husband was amongst the company of the prophets. Her husband revered the Lord. There are many situations that we are in today that if you speak out to some people that you revere the Lord or you belong to the company of the prophets or you belong to a certain kind of faith, your faith won't be able to interact with the way you are living. So she had faith that as long as my husband is from the company of the prophets, as long as my husband is a believer, we are not supposed to be in this situation. Even if we find ourselves in a certain difficult situation, before we conclude that God has abandoned us, before we conclude that we are under witchcraft, before we conclude that we have sinned, we are being punished, or we are being punished, we have to first check why are we in that situation. So that's what the woman simply did. She just went to the servant of God and asked the servant of God that this is the situation we are in. And when she went to ask the servant of God, she laid down her case, like in a court of law. She was like a lawyer. She, she laid down her case before the man of God that this is my situation. And I'm facing this situation. But remember, my husband is from the company of the prophets. Remember, my husband revered the Lord. But look at my situation. Let me give you some prophetic advice. Each time you go before the Lord in prayer, each time before you go the, 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 before the man of God, you must present your case before God Almighty. God, I am barren, but look here. This is my record of serving faithfully. This is my record of tithing faithfully. This is my record of giving faithfully. This is my record of living a righteous life. Once you lay down your cause before God, once you lay down your facts before God Almighty, there is no way your story will not change. When you go before the Lord, remind Him that oh God Almighty, you say that your word will never return to you void until it has accomplished what you sent it to do. You sent your word, oh God, in my life for one, two, three, four, five things. And I was faithful to follow these things. Why am I in this situation? I want to assure you, if you do that, God will open a book of remembrance for you. God never forgets all the work that you do in his house. God never forgets all the offerings you have offered on your altar, all the burnt offerings. You just need to present your case before God and say, oh God, open the book of remembrance for my life as you are watching me right now may god open a book of remembrance in the name of jesus a book of remembrance in the name of jesus sometimes our books of remembrance are closed because of the altars that fight us to be remembered for the good things that we have done there are people we have helped in our lives that have turned their backs on us there are people we we, we have prayed for as servants of God. There are people we have prayed for and they, they did not come to say thank you Jesus for, for healing. There are people as you are watching me right now that you have assisted, that you have helped, that were supposed to be your destiny helpers, but they never came back to help you. As you are watching me right now, connecting to this grace and the atmosphere of the prophetic in this place, may those that are supposed to help you remember you in the name of Jesus. May the book of remembrance be opened in the name of Jesus. Be opened in the name of Jesus. Be opened in the name of Jesus. It is only when the book of remembrance is open that you can be able to eat 
or enjoy the fruits of the land. Verse number two. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? How can I help you? Before the lady answered and said, Help me with this. Remember the lady had already uh, told the man of God that the issue here is that she was sinking in debt and the debtor or the creditor um, was coming to take her sons. So already the man of God knew what the problem was but he went on to ask a very prophetic question. How can I help you? What do you have in your house? Ladies and gentlemen, and all viewers all over the world that are watching me right now, when God wants to deliver a person, when God wants to deliver a nation, when God wants to deliver a country, God deals with what you have. We are going to go deeper on this message and break it down very well when I'm, I'm teaching you on the series that is upcoming on uh, discovering your purpose. God deals with what you have. To me, if I was if I was a carnal person or to a carnal person, the carnal person would say, why can the man of God or why does God ask the lady what she has when the lady has already told her that she has nothing. She's even owing someone who is coming to take away her kids. So why is the man of God being rude or being heartless? To ask the lady to say what do you have in your house it's obvious that the lady does not have anything that's why she's coming for help but there's a principle that God works with I'm sure in the last episode I taught you about Luke 6 verse 38 which says give and it shall be given unto you a good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men pour unto your bosom and I taught you that the scripture is clearly saying give and then it shall be given unto you. Even God himself did not first receive us who are following the faith right now, who are giving uh, our lives to Christ right now. He first gave his only begotten son so that he could harvest us now. Imagine how many believers are in the world right now because of one gift that was given first. When God was uh, sending Moses when Moses saw the burning bush and Moses was given a task that I want to send you to Egypt to deliver my children out of uh, Egypt, the children of Israel. And then Moses asked the question and said, when I go there, who shall I say has sent me? And what can I prove? What can I do to prove to them that God Almighty has sent me? And the Bible says, God told him and said, what is in your hand? And he said, I'm holding a staff or a rod. And God Almighty said, throw the rod down. And he threw the rod down and the rod turned into a snake. So Moses did not need to get any other thing from God for him to perform a miracle. He did not need to receive anything for him to start moving, to start operating in his purpose. What he needed was in him. What he needed was in his house. What he needed was in his end for this lady to come out of debt imagine you who is watching me right now you are crying because you are having a debt maybe a debt of a car a debt of a house or you are owning some people that uh, borrowed you some money and maybe your, your debt is barely less than 100,000 50,000 20,000 200,000 Imagine a debt that gets to the extent that the people are coming to take your children. What can be compared to two people's lives? Which debt can be compared to the lives of two children? So which means this debt was a serious one. There's nothing she, she could do because she had already hit the wall. God was the only solution. And then the prophet is coming with a prophetic message to say, for you to come out of this debt, what you need is what you have 
in your house. Remember in the book of Genesis, I'm sure it's Genesis uh, 126 when God created man and the Bible says he put Adam in a deep sleep. I've once taught of this message and when Adam was in a deep sleep, the Bible says he took the rib out of Adam and then he created or he made Eve out of the same rib. So God had to put Adam in a deep sleep for him to take something out of him to create a helper for him. So it is only when you are in that state of deep sleep that you need to let go of something so that you receive a greater thing. So even though the woman came to, to, to cry to the man of God, she did not have a revelation that what she needed to come out of a situation, she already had it in her house. Let's read verse 3 and hear what the lady is saying. Verse 2 says, Elijah replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all. She said, Except a small jar of olive oil. Your servant has nothing there at all. That is the excuse of many people today. I don't have anything. I can't do it because I don't have anything. I can't do it because my family does not have anything. I cannot do it because my account does not have anything. And then she goes on to say, except a small jar of olive oil. Except a small jar of olive oil. She did not have a revelation that the greatest things that were, were going to come out of her life were hidden in that small jar of olive oil. As you are watching me right now, what is that small jar of olive oil in your life that you think is not important to take you out of misery? That you think is not important to take you out of that stagnancy, out of that delay, out of that disappointment? What is that small jar? Remember, even our Lord Jesus Christ taught us on, on the issue of faith. And he said, if only you have faith as small as a mustard seed. He did not uh, speak of faith as big as a, as a pumpkin or as big as, uh, as a mountain. As small as a mustard seed. A mustard seed is very small. It's something very, very small. But out of that small seed, you can move mountains. So the lady did not have a revelation that out of that small jar of oil, out of that small jar of oil, she was going to have abundance. I'll ask you again this question. What is that small jar of oil that you are having in your house? What is that small jar of oil that you think cannot lift you from one position to the next one? Maybe you're a servant of God. What is that small jar of the anointing that you are moving from one place to the other to, to keep on heaping more and more anointing on you and you feel that you are not yet full to go and start the ministry, to go and minister to the people. But I've come here as a servant of God to tell you that you can still rise up from your chair of failure. You can still rise up from that chair of stagnancy, from that comfort zone with that little oil that you have. God is waiting for you with that little oil. Remember the time of Noah. God gave Noah a commandment and said, rise up and build an ark. And after you build the ark, I'm going to send forth rain. What was stopping the rain is Noah delaying to build, the, to build the ark. So it basically means that God was waiting for Noah to take a step first and then God will now interfere in his program. So even as you are watching me right now, God is waiting for you to take that step of faith with that little oil, to take a step of faith and say, I'm doing it. 
like what the people say these days that if I die, I die. Let me, let me take you back to a message I once taught about a blind man and Jesus was putting mud on the eyes of a blind man. And I taught in that message, I said, the man was already blind. And Jesus, instead of laying hands on him and just say, your eyes be open, Jesus took the sand and he spit on the sand and he rubbed that sand on the man's eyes. And I mentioned in that teaching that I know everyone who is watching me right now knows how uncomfortable it is for sin to enter your eyes, how rough it is. And the Bible clearly says Jesus anointed the men's eyes with the sin, anointed. So the anointing was the key word here. So the man had a revelation that I am already blind. So even if someone is putting sin in my eyes, it does not matter anymore because I'm already blind. So if I die, I die. I just have to take this step of faith. Maybe in this pain, my sight is going to be restored. So many of us who are watching me right now, you are afraid of going through that pain. You are afraid of losing that small oil. Small oil. You are afraid of putting that small oil into use because you believe that you are going to die afterwards. But don't forget that you are already blind. And what you need is your sight to be restored. And that sight is being restored through the pain of the sand in your eyes. Because each time where there's a pain, where there's pain, there is always an anointing and a breakthrough. If you are holding olives here, or if you are holding lemon here, you have to squeeze the lemon, you have to grind the olives to produce oil, you have to squeeze the lemon to produce lemon juice. So if you hold on to an unsqueezed lemon and said, I can't let go of this small lemon, you are not able to have lemon juice. So if you are not yet able or not yet ready to release that small oil in your house, you are not going to experience an overflow like what the widow did. In this year, 2021, it's not a year to give excuses anymore to say, I can't do it because I don't have anything. Remember the lady said, accept the little jar. I mean the oil, the little oil that I have. Accept the little oil that I have. The small jar. Let's go ahead and read verse number three. Elijah said, go around and ask, ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars and as each is filled, put it to one side. Now after the lady had released the small jar or had mentioned that she only had the small jar in her, in her house, a prophetic word now came to advise her. Go around, ask your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Go around and ask for empty jars. One of the reasons why many of us are not filled to the brim is because we are already full. So for God to fill us up, we need to be empty. That's why the prophetic message is telling the woman that you must gather around you empty jars. Because it's only when you are gathered with empty jars that you can be able to receive an abundance in your life. Many of us, we lack, but we are full of ourselves. We are full of pride. We can't admit that we need to empty ourselves for us to experience an overflow in the anointing, overflow in finances, overflow in peace. So the prophetic advice came to the woman, actually is the same prophetic advice that is coming to you right now. You need to empty yourself so that God can fill you. You need to empty yourself of your ego so that God can fill you. You need to empty yourself of um, 
all the things you know. Remember from the Old Testament day when Moses was being called by God in the burning bush, a voice clearly told him and said, remove your sandals for the, the, the ground where you're standing. The place where you're standing on is a holy ground. So that was a symbol of saying, remove all the knowledge you have. Remove everything that you think you know. We are starting on a new journey. We are starting on a new venture. And that venture needs you to start on a clean ground, empty ground. You don't come to ask for help already when you are having knowledge. So why do you come to ask for help when you are already full of knowledge? So when you come, you must be empty so that God fills you with new, new knowledge, new favor, new grace, new anointing. So that's the prophetic word that the woman was given, that gather around yourself, empty jars. Are you ready today to gather around yourself empty jars? To empty yourself of all the knowledge you think you have and just listen to the voice of God and just hear what God is saying to you. If we go down with the scripture, she went down, she, went, she left the man of God, she shut the door behind her and their sons, they brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. I love the faith of this lady. The man of God is telling her that take empty jars, go and close yourself in the house and pour the oil into the empty jars. That does not make sense at all. The lady is here to be helped to pay debts. She's expecting the man of God to give her money to pay the debts. She's not there to do all this circus of putting uh, the little oil into big jars of oil. That doesn't make sense at all. But the lady was spiritual. She knew who she was talking to. She knew the power behind the prophet. She knew that God can turn nothing into something. She knew that God can transform small things into mighty great things. She was obedient to the voice. How many of you are obedient to the voice of God as you are watching me today? Are you obedient to the voice of God to say, leave that job that is giving you one million? Leave that place of business. Leave one, two, three things or uh, transfer from this place to the next one. Or relocate from a certain place. Or maybe you had planned to, to buy a house today and the voice of God is telling you that is not the time now. Stop. Will you be obedient? Remember, for the things of God are foolishness to those who are perishing. So there's one thing that we as believers should learn is to be very spiritual. It is the world that is foolish. That's why they laugh at us. That's why even when we cry for churches to, to open, they mock us because they don't understand spiritual matters. It is only when you understand spiritual matters you are able to understand how God operates. But if you are able, if you are trying to calculate the moves of God with a carnal mind, it will always appear as if it's a foolish thing. She was obedient. She went and closed herself inside the house. She started pouring. The, child, the children started pouring the oil. And the Bible says the oil was filling up miraculously into those empty jars. And here on the last part of verse number five, of verse number six, she said, when all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. So the oil stopped flowing simply because there were no jars anymore. Not because the anointing was finished. That's why at one point Jesus Christ often told the disciples that I have a lot to teach you, but you are not ready to receive. It means Jesus had a lot of information to teach them, but they had no capacity to receive what God wanted them to receive. 
I always teach people in the church that it's like you are having a phone with a memory of five megabytes and someone wants to send you a song that you love or send you a song that will bless you or send you information that will help you and that information is five gig and your phone can only receive five megabytes no matter how much you pray how much you fast no matter how much you jump up and down no matter how much you spray oil or water no matter how much you touch the sticker there is no way your that song is going to fit in your phone because your phone has a low capacity so what needs to be done is for you to upgrade your phone from five megabytes to 10 gig so that you can be able to accommodate the five gig so even now when i'm giving you this information for you to be able to digest it and for you to be able to apply it to use it for your advantage you must have a capacity to receive it a bigger capacity remember the scripture says my people perish because of lack of knowledge it is only when you don't have a capacity to receive knowledge that you will perish so the oil stopped not because the oil was finished but because the jars were finished you must always strive child of god to have a bigger capacity have a bigger vision have a big, bigger picture of life because god only deals with you according to how big your vision is how big your dream is how big your capacity is if you take the richest man in the world here and put him here and take yourself here the reason why this person is here is because of his mindset his his capacity and the reason why many of us are in the same situation we are in is because of our low capacity so we need to increase more jars empty jars for god to fill us up i hope this message is blessing you as you are listening me to me right now if you are being blessed just quickly type there on the comment box that i'm blessed i'm blessed and i'm blessed and as you are typing may god bless you and increase you verse number seven says she went and told the man of god and the man of god this is the part that i want you to listen to very carefully as i as i finish and the man of god said go and sell the oil and pay your debts you and your sons can live on what is left go and sell and pay your debts you and your sons can live on what is left what is in your hand many of you are planning to start businesses are planning to pursue their careers their purposes what is in your hand when i say what is in your hand i'm saying what is your gift here what was in the lady's hand multiplied and the prophetic word came and said go and sell what you have multiplied and pay your debts and leave on the profit you and your children so it's a simple principle that god is, is 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 revealing to you today that for you to be able to pay the debts as this woman in the word you simply need to check what you have inside of you capitalize on it sell it to those who need there are people who need your your, your gift there are people who need your your information there are people who need your skill go and sell it out to the world pay your debts and let your family live off the rest are you a good writer are you a good speaker are you a good singer are you a good uh, keyboardist are you a good writer are you a good uh, motivational speaker what is that gift are you a good painter are you a good teacher are you a good uh, plumber are you a good electrician are you a good uh, computer graphics person before you are praying for someone to employ you 
what is it that you have when you're sitting there in your house watching me right now what is it that you can do on the side that you can sell to those who need your services and pay your debts and you and your children leave after the profits i have come to challenge you this wonderful night that what you want is right there inside of you jesus christ has already given you that gift that power that anointing that grace you not you just need to stretch your mind you just need to go and pray and ask the lord god reveal what is that special thing in me some of you you already know what it is but the society the system of the world has diverted you to think that you are having that small oil that you cannot use I think I'll have to stop here today. By God's grace, maybe I'll continue going deeper with this message so that you understand what you need in this year 2021. I want you to stay tuned for more of these programs as we are going to be doing this time and again. And you can as well send us an email or comment on the comment box on which topics you believe that you need clarity on but remember what i just taught you tonight that little oil that you are having that you think is small is what god wants to use to raise your family don't wait to become a millionaire you have to make yourself that millionaire don't wait to become a big person you have to make yourself that big person don't, don't wait to become the most anointed. You must use that small anointing that God gave you. We are all anointed when we give our lives to Christ. There's that special grace that comes for, I mean, on top of everyone who has given their lives to Christ. Use that strength. Use that anointing. When the angel of God appeared to Gideon, he said, mighty men of valor, go in thy strength. Go in thy strength. That power that you think is small is the one that God wants you to use to go therefore with it. I'll meet you again next week and we'll continue and finish up. May God bless you. Shalom. Hello there viewers, thank you for watching this wonderful program. May God bless you and enlarge your territory. I want you to stay tuned for more of these wonderful programs that are going to transform your mind and change your life for the good. Remember, the year 2021 is a year of divine purpose. And I'm praying that God helps you to discover your purpose in 2021. God bless you and stay tuned. Shalom.